Welcome to Soccer as we like it, the channel for United and football fans globally. We are here talking about Man United's tour and transfers, everything that's happening to Man United this week and going into the new week. Joining me from UK, I have a UK crew, a full UK crew meet today. I am welcoming Mr. Angry, or should we call him Mr. Strict Richard? Welcome to the show. <laughs> Mr. Angry. <laughs> I am He's a zero, zero tolerance. <laughs> and we're going to welcome the analyst, Vim. Welcome to the show. Yep. Yes, thank you. Hi, Vim. Right. Actually, Richard should be our Twitter analyst. <laughs> oh, yeah, I do. You know, I, I, I confess, you know, Twitter is accessible, but some of the information that comes out of Twitter is, is, is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think there are some level headed people who know what that I mean. Sometimes, more times, more people with level headed mindsets and mature go yeah. on Twitter. And you know, I, I see that's a good point. There's a lot of fake profiles out there pumping yes. out fake news, and I'm thinking, well, yes. why are they doing that? What's the benefit? Because of that? it draws yeah. likes, it yeah, draws just... followers. Because mm. I see so much fake news on Facebook, it's like. Really, bro? Come on. Oh, latest news. Uh, uh, Greenwood is back at United. And everyone's mm. going in there, clicking like... And Click it's it. just like, it's fake. This is not right. Yeah. But it's used to draw people in. Right. But it is what it is. It's stupid. But then well, they, can't, they can't be making much out of it. It can't monetize a lot, can you? Because you're just mm. getting, what, no. fractions of a cent or something. Go yeah, on, but, okay. but it's still drawing people. The traffic coming in is so what they're looking at. Yeah, to get on, especially the verified accounts, they, they get yeah, people, they, they, yeah. Know. So the verified ones do, which is and you know, like there's a fake Fabrizio account, there's a fake few yeah. other fake Man United yeah. accounts. Oh, yeah, that's true. That are pumping out the fake stories. I mean, are they? Do you think they're making a lot by all this fake stuff? Well, shouldn't this thing like be the, shut the, down? The fringe accounts. Shouldn't they they be should shut be shut down? down. They should. Why? Why is these um, platforms not verifying? I mean, they just allow so much fake stuff come out on social media. Like, come on now, bro. I know they can't monitor everything, but come on now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Man United uh, on the third preseason tour game after playing, uh, they played the, no no the Norwegian team. They lost 1-0, played the Rangers last week and won 2 nil, and they flew to America where they will be playing Arsenal, Real Betis, and Liverpool. The yesterday's game was in San Diego in a packed stadium. Um, yeah. I, feel, I think it was the same venue they played Arsenal last season, if I'm if my memory serves me right. It was in California, I don't know if it's the same. I thought it was Los Angeles they played it. Right, right. Yeah. So, you know, United played a very strong lineup in the first half. They played a, we, they had Ahmad, Rashford, Onana, yeah. even yeah. they paired Euro with Maguire, Wamba Saka, and two other you guys played. But Ahmad and Rasmus, they linked up very, very well. And I think Ahmad should be starting if the season starts because he was he's done very well. I just hope he stays injury free, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Rasmus yeah. scored five minutes later. He lived up because it was people were saying it, it was an artificial pitch. It wasn't grass, so kind of yeah. players were slipping and sliding at, at a certain point. Euro limped off. We, I don't know the latest if how injured he was or Rasmus. We, I, we don't want them to be injured. For the before the season starts, I hope it's just precautionary measures that they were taking off. But um, over overall, um, first half beautiful game. Second half, when the teams changed eleven players, mm, you know, yeah. it, it um, completely changed. What's your Frank thing? Ten Hag said that a uh, Euro could be out for a while. Oh damn! Oh, right. oh. Hairline what did he injure? Hairline, Hairline fracture? Where? God. I, I don't know. That, that that's what. Well, Ten Hag said he, he was on. Oh, like my that. word. That's, oh, a, that's, that's a bit of a disaster. That's a disaster, mate. So and, and early. Before this, he's been pretty much injury-free for his out of Let me just... Uh, oh, damn. That means Lindelof won't have to stay on. Oh, dear. I was hoping we could sell him off. <laughs> no, um, way this headline is. Maguire will, will stay. Oh, no. So, Lindelof and Maguire again. That's another, lo another season lost. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Martinez is not even in preseason because yeah. he uh, played for um, Argentina in the Copa, so he's gonna he won't even join the preseason. He will actually be joining. He's he's gonna be starting probably week three or week four of the Premiership because he's not really in practice yet. You know. Yeah. So that will uh, hinder United's progress. But a hairline fracture we talk about four weeks, five weeks. Yeah, I I I don't know how true this is, but. 
So I'm reading out. So um, Tin Hag on Lenny Euro and Rasmus mm. Hoyland. Mm. We know we have to we have to wait over 24 hours, and then we'll know. Then we'll hopefully know more. We were carefully, especially sorry. We were careful, especially with Lenny. He did only 50 percent of the sessions. Let's be positive and see what the outcome is. Yes. But then he said um, somewhere else. I read that they could he could be out for a while. Um, and that's it. That, that is really good. bad. You know, he's 18, and yeah. you know, up to that point, I, I, he played so many games last season for uh, his club, and um, wasn't didn't have any injuries. He comes to United yeah. preseason. The hell. No, that's not good news, mate. That is not good news. And I hope it's not too, he won't be out too long because, you know, his plans to, you know, because, I mean, the few games he played against Rangers, he was solid. He looked like he'd been there a long time. He was confident yeah. with the ball. Yesterday, yeah. he was put his point in his tackles to now say he's limping off like, come on, yeah. mate. That's too much, you know. But uh, another thing where uh, people wanted to ask you guys, do you want Wambasaka to stay or be sold? He wants to go to Italy. Great question. Great question. The thing is, Wambasaka one on one um, defensive defensive jewels. He's brilliant, but attacking wise, he's not great. He's not great technically. So, if we're trying to play a different style of football, I can see why we're trying to get rid of him. But at the same time, he offers something else off the bench. So, I mean, I'm fifty fifty. I mean, I won't mind keeping him. To me, in, uh, Wan Bissaka is inoffensive. Sorry, in, inoffensive as a player, like literally. Um, you know, keeping him wouldn't do any harm. You know, he's a pretty, he's a quiet lad. He's not too brash, mm. but he does his job um, on, a, on, on on most occasions. But he'll never be at that elite level, if that makes sense. So, yeah, maybe, maybe we're just trying to play a different style of football, and he just doesn't fit. Right. I'm fifty fifty on his sale. But Bim, are you on the same? Are you on the same path with? Uh, do you want? I mean, offers have come in from West Ham, mm -hmm. but he is saying how much? he wants to. They 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 offer like 30, 25 to thirty. United That's have offered for thirty five. We we paid fifty. Um, do you I want? Think, him, I think... Would you prefer him to stay or take the money? And call uh, it? Well, look, I mean, he's he's he is going to be out on his way out. If we can get thirty million from him. For him, um, and I think he's 29 years old, and I think it's probably yeah. worth taking up that offer. But that, you know, because we tend to lose a lot of money. We're going to lose 20 million on him, but we've had him a good number of years. He doesn't fit the profile of right back that we need. True. I think 30 million is a fair price because right. you know, in I the agree. beginning they were touting 10 million. <laughs> I think that's yeah. a bit so, of a mistake, mate. I think that's a bit harsh. Yeah, that's yeah. but that, that's what I was seeing. 10 million, 15 million. I think it, no way we paid 50 million for the guy. So yeah, he's he's I, I say Richard, he's inoffensive, but he's also not offensive, <laughs> as in, in very play, true. playing wise. Yeah, yeah. yeah. playing style. He's not he's not offensive. He's just a pure out and out defender. And I really wished that he could develop into a centre back. Yeah, but he just doesn't have that aerial ability. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he seems mm -hmm. to. Yeah, he's uh, not, not the greatest in the air either. No, he's, he's terrible in the air. He's, he's very poor positioning as well. He has lapses Correct. in concentration, yeah. so yeah, you need wow. to be uh, you need to be great uh, positioning to be a centre back. So what did what did we actually what was what was our attraction to him when we purchased him? Was it just his sliding tackles? Was or was that all we could see? Just a tackler on blocking people? Was there not anything else we thought? Because I think yeah. we were under Ole, right? Under Ole. Yeah, it was under Ole, and we had scouts scouting, I think, 50 right-backs across Europe or something ridiculous across the globe, and he and they decided on him, but I think at the time, the the, the, the mantra under Oli in his first transfer window was to buy young and, and uh, British talent, so um, Dan James came in, if, if you don't remember. Dan, and then, Dan James. Da, yeah, Dan, Dan James. James. Uh, we made profit on Dan James. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we yeah, yeah, and then uh, Maguire came in, and um, then it was Wan Bissaka. Um, so I think that was the type of profile for that first window, anyway. That first summer that they were looking at, and I suppose they they took a gamble on him. Really, would you would you say he's been a success at United? Uh, I think he's done. He's performed to his level, Crystal Palace player. 
Oh, damn. Know, yeah, and, and, and I don't mean to be harsh, but he played for Crystal Palace before, so he's 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 on his ceilings only at I think he performed like the ceilings can only get so high with him, right? So I don't think he's been a success, but I don't think he's been a failure. So if you have someone asking mm-hmm. now on a scale of one to from when he got from when he was bought from Ole to now, what would you give on a scale of from one to ten? Five and a half, six. Damn. Ouch. Vim. <laughs> Vim. Yeah, I, I could agree. I think it's about uh, uh, six, probably, at the most, because he didn't give us everything we need in a right, right. back. You right. know, and he was only disappointing going forward. Right. Right. He had it didn't have the ability to cross, you know. No. I mean there was laughable situations when um, <laughs> Ronaldo had to go and cross for him. <laughs> And yeah. and defensive. That was well. embarrassing, actually. Yeah. Old man like sprinted 40 yards, keep the ball in play. All right, you run that go cross. My man puts the ball behind the goal. Ronaldo looked in like really that was hilarious. But it is it is levels. There are levels. So so you guys are up for him. You want your these if he goes, it's like mm, whatever. Yeah, you're at that point. Yeah. Yeah, and, and again, the, I, I want to stress the fact that if we are trying to play a certain brand of football mm. that requires technical ability, players mm. that can you know dribble, attack, but as well and defend and mm. hold the line and are tactically aware, then I think that he has to go um, if we're going to move forward because we've got too many technically limited players at the United. You know, yeah, United yeah, United yeah. Uh, he, my... He's saying he would rather go to Inter Milan. There's yeah. no arrangement. He, he, I mean, he probably does want to play in the Premier League. He wants to go to Inter Milan. I mean, I think it will suit him because they, they play a kind of more defensive, defensive, which would probably suit his game, a more defensive um, model of football than the yeah. physical 100, meter, uh, 100 miles an hour mentality of the Premier League players. So I think Italy, but United... I have not heard any from it from Inter Milan. They've only heard from West Ham, and West Ham have offered them, made them an amount, and United like, yeah, you know. Because remember, West Ham also lost out on um, the Brian Minnick defender. Um, what's his name now? Um, I had his name in my on my. I wrote his name. Was it? Um, let me check. Mazur. Matsu. Yeah, 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 yeah. The right back, Matsuri. Yes. So yeah. So he's the kind of the key. He was supposed to go to West Ham. West Ham, that mm. dude fell apart. So United mm. are now pushing to get him. If he comes in, how good is this guy? Have you, have you heard anything? Is he that good? At, um... Well, I'll give you a bit of a clue on this guy. So he um, played on the Ten Hag at Ajax. But he what linked well with man? Anthony. Well, yeah, he's got history with... The person I reckon that's pushing this is to Eric Ten Hag himself because he, he's got he, he used him as a right back and he linked well with Anthony a few years ago. So I think from an offensive standpoint he's okay, but from a defensive standpoint, it remains to be seen whether or not he'll be a success. Is he an improvement from you think he's an improvement to Juan Bissaka? Oh man. Yeah. From a technical <laughs> and a, an attacking standpoint, yes. From a okay. defensive standpoint. Yeah, it no. makes sense. So United could go in for him, then let Juan Bissaka go, and he would be more of a backup to um, uh, Dalo. I yeah, only just yeah. recently re- re- realized Dalo was United's both their player of the year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he, he's, he's kind of he's, he's in the mold mold of Dalo. Yeah, Dalo. Yeah, that okay. type of profile. Well, that, that would be an improvement. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So yeah, I think so. But we just need to establish a style of play. Um, and I've seen some some encouraging things in the preseason mm. where we're playing better football. Mm. But, but again, the jury's out on whether Tin Hag can sustain for the season. Right. I mean, do you have any? Do you have a, fe- a gut feeling with the new structure in place now? Every Ten Hag might be forced to play a more creative style but whereby he's been given an, a lifeline and listen this is your ticket now we have given you the structure we're yeah. giving you the players you can't yeah. f up now do you think he would now change his mindset um 
Well, that's the, the, the mantra from uh, Ineos and Jason Wilcox is that they want someone to play an attractive brand of football. Mm. Um, so I think they're going to try and, and they're giving him the coaches. You can't say he's not got the coaches. You know, mm -hmm. they've, they've, they've recruited some good coaches um, from all over Europe now to help him out. So oh, he can't have any excuses. Apparently, the players didn't get on with Eric Van, Mitchell van der Gaag, his assistant. No, he's gone now. He's, he's yeah, he did my RBN. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, so we, we've got some good assistant coaches. I personally think that he's got no excuses. I'm sorry, you know, he's, he's had three years now, um, and if it doesn't work out, they'll they'll get Ruud van Nistelrooy at least as an interim because he's been head coach before at PSV, um, and even the other guy that they got in um, Hat is it Hat or whatever it's called. He was a head coach, so they've got they've got good leaders um, in the backroom staff. So Eric Eric Ten Hag definitely will be under the pressure this season. Right. So so are you happy with the appointment of uh, Ruud van Nistelrooy? Yeah, uh, yeah. United legend. Um, he done well in the Dutch league, and I, th I see it as somebody who's looking over Ten Hag's job. You know. <laughs> so, so you've it's true. And I think this will um, put pressure on Ten Hag to, to do well because he knows that Van Nistelrooy has done well in the Dutch league. He's, he's not like he's not coming from an assistant coach role. So mm -hmm. Van, Van Nistelrooy knows the club well. He, he's regarded as a club legend. I mm -hmm. think he's got that respect amongst the younger players as well. Mm -hmm. the, yeah. So I think Ten Hag knows that. Look, if I mess up here, this guy's just waiting in the wings to take. Oh yeah. Job. Oh yeah. I mean. I watched, they showed a few training clips yesterday when they were training, I don't know if it was Friday training, and Ruud Van Nistel was watching over the forwards like Rashford, as in, don't overhold the ball. Yeah. Make your moves and pass or shoot. And I saw that in the, in the game yesterday against Arsenal, Sancho was doing the same thing, overholding the ball and trying to get through too many players at the same time and lose possession when people yeah. are waiting and opening and like, you know, it, it, when I was looking at what people were saying, Ruud Van Nistelrooy, he, he was a great striker, but he was a very selfish striker. Let's not... He was a selfish striker. He was. He, he was. was. Very great striker, but yeah, one, a single-minded, really, wasn't he? Very single-minded, which I get, and he was very clinical. And I hope he, people like Ganacho, Rashford will learn on how to finish those one-on-ones because we had so many one-on-ones and these guys are just fluffing around and messing around. I think yeah. Ruud Banish be, is a better choice than Bernie McCarthy in terms of striker, striking managers, striking coaches than, because yeah, Ruud was a predator, you know, even though he had yeah. great supplies with Giggs and Beckham and uh, Ronaldo at, when Ronaldo's a winger, but he was he was deadly in the box. He really was a deadly predator. If yeah. he could help yeah, done players. It for Hollands. Done for Holland, Real Madrid, anywhere he's gone, he's scored. Yeah, goals. I, I, you know, I keep forgetting he actually went to Real Madrid. Yeah, and won the first La Liga, helped them win the first La Liga title in so many years when they were struggling with, even though they had the Galacticos and not winning Jack at that time. Yeah. They won the yeah. first La Liga when he was there, and he, exactly. he's a he was a deadly predator. I'll give the guy props. So I hope player. he can improve these. Guys up front, especially those guys who keep shooting, hitting blanks, the Antonis, the Ganachos, the Sanchos, who get chances and constantly keep not knowing how to place the ball under the a keeper or up or just chip. He was, when it came to one on ones, he was one of the best in his day. It really? really was. It was. So I hope My he can. Um, uh, I would say yesterday, uh, this guy was really good. Rasmus was good. He linked us so well with Ahmad yesterday. Really, really good. And for some reason, Rasmus scored a beautiful goal. After 10 minutes, he was done. He was out. He lived off. I hope that wasn't serious as well. I mean, you know, it's. I just don't like these players getting injured in pre-season games. It's not worth it, mate. It's not worth the hassle. You know, nah. yeah, so yeah, and someone, um, there's a question someone asked. I wrote it down. Do you guys think other goalkeepers should be used instead of a nine and the preceding top? Vim, I 
thing on mute. Say that again. Uh, someone, a, a, a viewer asked, should another, should the, should the United's reserve keepers be used sometimes instead of a nana for full games all the time in these preseason matches? Uh, yes, we need to rotate keepers. Um, <clears throat> you know, if he keeps persisting with a nana and nana keeps making those mistakes, um, you've got to create a sense of competition for him because he, he's almost allowed to get away with his mistakes and he still gets keeps getting picked whereas if you keep if you put someone um on edge in terms of you know competing for the position then they know they always have to perform and they're a little bit more uh in tune with what they have to do they're, they're, they're more concerned about their performance you know if you you can't keep rewarding mistakes and he, he does make a few mistakes um you've got to try the other keepers out and you've got to give them you know if none is going to be premier league uh keeper then get the others in for the for the cup runs yeah, I wanted to see that Turkish guy. What's his name? Um, what now? Yeah, uh, Bayendir. Uh, about, uh, Bayendir, that's it. Bayendir, yeah. yeah, yeah. Rich, 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 Rich what's your what's take your take on it? I mean, especially in this preseason tour. It, I mean, Onana doesn't have to keep playing ninety minutes for all the games. Yeah, just he needs he needs to rotate personally. Um, there's, there's a lot of keepers waiting in the wings uh, that. Deserve a bit of a chance, especially in preseason. Exactly. Uh, yeah, when are they going to get that chance? I mean, Bayern you know. is one of them. It wasn't in, in, in the Euros, or am yeah, I? He was in the Euros. He was in the Euros with Turkey. Euros. They got to the. Didn't they get to the semis? Yeah, they got to the semis with uh, against. The, was it the no, semis? No, they got the quarterfinals. Didn't they play? Uh, right. they, they lost to. Um... Holland. I think yes. It was. Yes. Yes. 2 1. I remember. Yeah. They scored first. Yeah. They got to the quarterfinals. Yeah, so I'm not sure if he's in the squad. I, I don't know, but then you've got the the Tom Heaton who I've never seen seen play. <laughs> is he's this like, still there? Is this still like, there? Like, he's still there, and he's he's hanging around with Evans and Maguire. But I don't I don't know why he's there. But you know, you, you can play him from time to time in the preseason. You know, right. So United lost the game yesterday, two one. The first goal. Played clearly offside. Maguire left the ball when the cross. It was a good build up, don't get me wrong. Arsenal, they took us apart on the left side of Wambasaka's side. But it, it, it was a situation he got lost joining. The ball was cut right in front of the goal. Maguire was standing. He didn't cut the cross out. And guy, um, um, Jesus just tapped it in. But he was offside. That's the problem. But, you know, it's preseason, no VAR. But. They did say, win or lose, they were going to do a penalty shootout, right? The yeah. second goal by Martinelli, that was a good goal. He just cut the ball in, went through the United defence, took a quick shot. It was, it was in there. And then I was paid off, started screaming at the defenders why they didn't, they didn't block the guy. But hmm. well, we lost the game, but we won the penalty shootout. <laughs> it's just stupid. <laughs> it, it was the reverse of last season. We won the game. We actually won the game and won the penalty shootout. This time we lost the game and won the penalty shootout. Um, there's this young striker, Wheatley, um, who has been playing as a cent as a centre forward for United. He's from the Academy, 17. Tall, not bad, kind of like a fox in a box, but uh, he had the opportunity. He he took his penalty. He sent the keeper the wrong way, but he put the ball past the target, you know? But everyone else, uh, McTominay, Evans, um, who else took a penalty? Ericsson and uh, the the four experienced guys, they all scored the penalties. Not they didn't. And Sancho, they all scored. There was no mistake about that. Only him, which is a kid, you know. But uh, you could see he was really devastated to not put the ball in the net after sending the keeper completely to the south and he, he put the ball in the north, missed it. But um, yeah, it's it's. it's Pre-season, you learn. Um, Sancho yesterday, mm, he was all right, but over dribbling, losing the ball. Same with Anthony, trying to take on too many players. Nothing changed with them two guys. Same, same issues. That one tried to always cut the ball to his left and shoot. Had it once, missed. I don't know. Anthony, next season, what are you expecting from Anthony? Rich. Um, he's he's really can he that. start? Can he start though? He's not as good as Ahmed. 
Uh, Ganacho is better on the right than him. Um, I mean, if Sancho's still there, yeah, but I mean, Sancho needs to again improve United anyway. Um, but Sancho's a better option than him. So I don't know. I, I was really hopeful of um, Anthony when he first joined. I haven't seen him for hours. You know, he was quite good in the Champions League. But he just look, looks a shadow of himself. He looks yeah. too convicted. Holds onto the ball. Is it you know confidence? What you think it's confidence has um, dropped? Yeah. I don't know. Because remember when he first came into the, the team, when we first signed him, he scored three goals in his first three games. And then there was one night in Europe, it was in the Europa League, when he'd done that 360 spin. Mm. And then he got subbed off at half time. Mm. And then all of, all of the pundits were like, like Skulls and all these guys were proper laying into him. I think his confidence just dropped since then. And then he had like, that uh, um, assault charge cases. Oh, yeah, the battery, the, the, yeah, the um, ex girlfriend and all that stuff. Yeah, uh. I, he just looks. Just looks like he, he he's shot of confidence, but I don't think anything's going to change with him. I think he might need to, if he's going to restore his confidence, he might need a loan uh, somewhere else to a oh, wow. uh, weaker league. Or well, this season's make or break, regardless, right? And in my opinion, because on the right you have Ahmad, Ganacho, and. Anthony. On the left, you have Rashford, Sancho. Who else? Is that everybody? That's everybody. He's So ahead of him now is Ahmed and Ganacho on the right. Are both ahead of Anthony. I don't know if he's going to be able to get into that team. I don't see it. I don't see a way through. So, yeah, like I said, so maybe a loan deal, but I can't even see that loan anywhere anyway. I think he's just going to be a squad. Yeah, player. no one's going to pay his wages out there. And um, I think his reputation's like really at, at, at the bottom now. Um, but maybe like a, a loan to a slower league like Italy might work out for him or go to Spain, go to like a Valencia or Netherlands. No, it's, it's, <laughs> Netherlands. Go back to <laughs> Holland. <laughs> That's yeah, what yeah, I return to centre, mate. That's what I return to centre. Oh. I don't, I, don't December, yeah. I don't I don't think I don't think that he'll go back to Holland. Um I would hate to see him go back to Brazil because that's basically just admitting that you're an ultimate failure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the thing is you can't blame uh, Anthony. You've got to blame this is this issue solely lies at Ten Hag's feet. He's he's the one that shipped him in, he's the one that uh sanctioned that, that deal and went for that probably went for that silly elevated price because mm -hmm. you know he's he's worked with him before mm. and he's know what he knows what he's capable of mm. so you know the fact that Anthony does those little tricks and those little spins and whatever he Ten Hag knows this is what he's about and you know sometimes you've got to you know players like to look don't show off a little bit and show off a, their flair you know Ronaldo yeah. used to do it and, yeah Nani used, used to, to do tell it. him off Nani used to do it and sometimes it's okay to Allow them to show their their you know their little show pieces. If the team is leading um, and uh, they've got the game shown up, yes, <laughs> yeah, I like and to be entertained. We love that stuff. Yeah, and I thought it was quite it was quite entertaining. But I I think all this ridicule that he did face, I think it was a little bit unfair. And then Ten Hag, you know, what did he do? Banned him for a couple of days, or just arrested him? So I don't know what he did exactly. What do you say, Richard? The media are brutal, bro. I'll tell you that. The media mate. brutal, yeah. Ten Hag. So, yeah. <laughs> Subbed him at half time and then I think he dropped him for the next game. He dropped him. You see, the thing is, that you, I think that's a bit cruel because you know you, you bring him from your former club. He's obviously shined for you over there. You've got to put your arm around him and say, "Look, don't fool around like this." Um, you know, and try and improve your game in this way rather than picking fights with everyone, which he's been doing a lot of. I I just think that's bad man management. Honestly, I I, I don't think you should be treating players like that because you've right. got to. You've got to be a team, and that the, the manager is in that team, in effect. All the successful teams out there, their manager is, is part of them, part mm -hmm. of that unit. So I just think it's just poor management, really. I don't, I don't, I, don't, I personally wouldn't be happy playing with Ten Mag if I was a professional wow. footballer wow. and treating me like that. Dang, that's a bit hard to be a minute. <laughs> yeah, but I just, this is the thing, isn't it? This is why I was a bit, uh, 
a bit disappointed that he got this extension because I really thought we we're going to go. I was well, coming to that. Yeah, well, I'm hoping we don't suffer this season because of, I know, you know. I I think I think we like I was telling Richard we just said earlier with the new structure now I don't think he has room to f about this time around. I mean he's they've taken some of the, the his powers off him mm. and like listen these are where your power should be stay on your lane focus and drive the car to your best on that lane. Yeah. So now I don't maybe think he this, could be effing about. Yeah. Maybe he's on a pip. I don't know if you know about pips. Performance improvement plan. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You do perform badly at work. Right. You've got one year left, right? Uh, or you're going to be, you know, you're getting a D and you're getting sacked. You got but, P45, you know, we're going to We're going to give you the environment. We're going to simplify your job. We're going to make you focus on just this. Mm. And this is your performance improvement plan. Exactly. You know, management are saying to him, these losses and these types of, uh, you know, silly uh, games that we've thrown away are not acceptable anymore. We've got one season to turn it around, and this is it. This is your performance improvement plan. You get paid a lot of money for it, but it feels like that's what it is. So, because he didn't, didn't really deserve an extension. Well, enough on that, babe, what do you expect United? Where do you expect United to finish this season? We've Okay, we've not finished signing players now. From where you see new structure, where do you think United? What do you expect United to finish in the league this season? I, not I the, think not the domestic is, job is just the league. Yeah, no, top four is going to be the minimum, and I'm pretty sure that's that's you know that's part of the performance improvement plan. You have to get in the top four, qualify for Champions League again, and go on decent cup runs and utilize your squad. And if you can't do any of the above, then we're not going to give you that last twelve months of your contract. However, we're giving you that extra 12 months as a little bit of bait, a little bit of motivation. Rather than you thinking this is your final 12 months and you've got nothing to play for, nothing to uh, be motivated for, we're potentially saying you've got 24 months, but we're going to um, analyse you for the next 12 months. Because you can't just say, yeah, this is your final year of the job and do your best and then bugger off. There's no motivation there. You've got to get hang a little carrot at the end of it. That potential additional extension. And I think that's really what's happening. Do well for 12 months. You've got another 12 months on top of that and we'll potentially extend. Do badly for the next 12 months. We'll think about taking that 12 months away. I, I, Rich, do you agree? What do you reckon? What do you expect from him this season? Not the Cups, not the FA, the League Cup, Europa, just the Premier League. What do you expect this season? Minimum top four. Minimum top Definitely. four. I, I, I don't think that Bim just said I'm in total alignment. Um, there's no excuses, like um, I said earlier. You know, they're giving them the coaches, they're giving them the spend. You know, that he's just bought Euro, one of Europe's most exciting uh, defenders. He's got this guy, um, Zerxi. Zerxi. and I think yeah. I'll, I'll, there'll be at least, and I, I stress the word, at least two more signings. I think there'll be about two or three signings to come through. So I think the the structures there, the setups there, he's got no excuse. So if he if he messes up. I personally think that uh, Rude will come in for an interim and they'll assess him from there. So you've already predicted well, he, won't, he won't make this. Are you saying he's not going to be able to meet those demands? I think your team is asking, is he going to pass his pit? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's going to pass his pit. I hope he does. Um, do you know what? I'm going to be trying to be positive. I know I'm very negative against Ten Hag, as you know. You know, he's like Vim said, picking fights with players and, and stuff and some of his tactics are questionable. But I think it's going to be a better season than last season. I um, hope so. I, I believe so. I, I, I really do. I think, I think I'll make that top four. That's my, my prediction. Right. And so, uh, one, a cho another trophy at least has to drop in as well, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we're all about silverware as a club, so yeah, that's... That, 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 that makes sense. I mean... But he's... he's... Part of that analysis is the way he treats players and the way the team feel about, about him. I, I think that has to be put into that pit, that he needs to build more camaraderie and more of a more team bonding. Because it's, it, I mean, Sancho's, carry on like this. Sancho's there. I don't know if he's going to be there. I mean, we're yeah. still in the transfer window. I mean, I don't know, but if PSG Paris comes Saint in... Man. Paris Saint-Germain won't win, but didn't... didn't, Sell didn't... It. I, I, I think... I think um, Ineos have told Ten Hag, look, with the Sancho situation, they've stepped in and said, look, there's no time for petty games. Sort it out. You know, we're paying him 300 grand a week. 
we're not going to let you banish him to the, the kids' changing rooms again. You know, he's an asset. It's an expensive asset at the end of the day. Mm. Let's get our money. Back. And if we can sell him, sell him. If we keep him, then you make sure it works. That's what they've probably told him. Yeah, so which, so which, which any prudent business owner should be doing. Mm. You can't have expensive stuff like that. You in, know, in, in, on, on leaving it on the shelf. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah, it does make sense, mate. <laughs> but if United sell him and get Ugarte in part of that exchange, deal, that would be great business as well. Because you're looking at okay, he hasn't lit up Old Trafford in his three and three years at United. He hasn't, if you're honest. You got a young potential attacking mid. Oh, another thing, Mason Mount played well yesterday. I'll let you guys know. He played well. He was quite good. He was really wanting the ball. I mean, maybe because Bruno wasn't there, but he was really trying to run things. Him and Casemiro were linking up in the middle. Because I come to realise we are still missing a lot of players from the Euros. Bruno's not back. Manu's not back. Ganacho's not back. And all these guys have still not been integrated into this team, which we might have a very good team going into the season, you know? Do you think um, any of those youngsters are going to break into the first team squad? I was looking at Wheatley, the striker, mm. but um, mm. he needs to be sharpened and bulked up a bit. He's tall and lanky. He's, he has the le- a, a workhorse physique, but not as tall. But he needs to kind of be a bit more muscular because Rude was tall, but he was like, you couldn't push mm. Rude, push Rude, I know he was. Rude was a dirty player. Don't get me wrong. That guy was, yeah, rude, was rude. Was rude. <laughs> he was. He was rude. I remember him and those Martin Keown challenges days. That guy was a rude. Was he was not? He was <laughs> nasty piece of work. I think that you've got to be though, isn't it? When uh, yeah. when you're at the top of the tree, everyone's trying to. Everyone's gunning for you. Yeah. He. Uh, he if you remember, he even in training, he the, even Gary never said even when he did score in training, he used to get pissed. When he did score in a real game, he'll be pissed. So when Ronaldo refused to cross the ball to him in training, he took it out, abused the guy verbally, said, I run and go, go run to your papa. And the guy who just lost his dad at the time, which was not the best wow. time to say those. And Alex Ferguson said, mate, come here, mate. You need to shut that shit down. And uh, Rui started having an attitude. He dropped him for the League Cup final that year, 06, I think it was. Yeah. And... Um, Okay, so Real Madrid are offering us some money for you, so it's been a pleasure. Off you go, mate. Alex does not play games, mate. But you know what, fit mm. based on that story, you know, Ronaldo is basically like a, a second son to Ferguson, mm. literally. You know, he, he used to... Hey, I don't... You, you probably... I don't know if he would have done that with an average player. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I mean... Okay, fair, fair enough. Rude pushed the mark boundaries mm. The dad team, but I don't think Ferguson would have protected an average player like he did with Ronaldo. Yes, I agree. Ronaldo I agree. First game through, he was struggling at times, but Ferguson never criticized him. You know, he, he um he kind of like said, okay, you know, put him under his wings. When his dad died, he let him have time off, all that stuff. I think Ferguson was a really good man manager, and I think when Rude done that, I think Ferguson took Ronaldo's side. And said, "Look, Rudy, as good as you've been for the club, you've got to go. This is my boy, Ronaldo." Yeah. And at that time, United, were, you know, you were beginning that partnership, Ronaldo, Rooney, and yeah, yeah. Look, don't forget, Luis Saha was still in the team at that time. Yeah. Who was a very great striker, but just could not stay fit. That Injury. guy's to get so that guy's to get injured in the warm up in the tunnel. So it's like Martial there. Yeah. He could not stay fit. Ooh. This and when he was fit, he would tell Ferguson, "I don't think I'm really fit." Even though the managers have said you're fit, psychologically, I don't think I'm ready to. You know what? Well, it's been a pleasure, bro. Yeah. Mm. He just so uh, is that the real reason that Rude left him because he had yeah, falling out? Yeah, he just had enough. And yeah. there was one game. United, uh, Henri and Nistro were fighting for the golden boot. Only one time in four years did Rudy Van Nistro outscore Henri. And there was another year he wanted to. United were out of contention for the league title. 
and Ferguson, Ferguson <laughs> dropped him and, and yeah. he asked Ferguson, why am I not playing? He said he needed one goal to, to outscore Henri. Ferguson said, listen, this is a team sport. We are not winning the league title. You have, I'm not, you're not here to glorify an individual title. You're not even in the squad. Sit in the crowd. Have a nice day. Yeah, I remember that. That, that. He oh, said man. he was heed. He said he was so upset. Then he realized it's not about him, it's about the team. And Ferguson does not care. Ferguson, it was very blunt. If you, you've got to understand for him to ship out Beckham then, who yeah. was literally uh, a um um, class of 92 mm. he just couldn't really? this guy and this was He's... just when social media was not where it is now Beckham was the yeah. flagship of the promotions yeah. modelling and all this Ferguson just said you know we are you've made. got to be you've got to be you've got to have these make these brave and bold decisions you know I think that's what makes good managers stand out from the rest yeah. And he's able to uh, trust the replacement of the player he's shipping out. You see what I mean? He already had the plan that, okay, I'm selling Beckham. There's this new Portuguese guy who was scouting. We're going to go play a tour game with those guys in Portugal. So he was already seen a Ronaldo before he said, Beckham, later. We are there. Yeah. I, I watched that. We didn't even have enough time to... Uh, Miss Beckham. Then that same season, this young raw guy turned up. We're like, what the hell? This guy got some skills, and the rest is history. I mean, Beckham wasn't yeah. skillful; he just was one of the best crossers of the ball and a hard worker. And yeah. we'll see this guy. And he was pin pinpoint passing as well, like, like laser skills. laser point. Yeah. yeah. And we see this yeah. guy dancing around players. We're like, well, we ain't seen. We we like to be entertained. Let's be honest. I'll, yeah. I'll tell you something. So that sporting Lisbon game, mm. I watched on, uh, on, <laughs> on TV on Man MU TV, and Ronaldo Torres to smithereens. And do you know Nuruddin from Twitter? Yeah, he, and he does podcasts with Saeed TV. Yes, I, I I know him. So Nuruddin was in the house, and uh, my friends um, were all sitting around the TV, and Ronaldo absolutely tore apart John O'Shea. And I remember Nuruddin had an argument with one guy, uh, one of my friends. He said, this kid is going to be the best player in the world. And the, wow. guy, the guy's a little bit said, nah, it's just one game, it's just friendly. And he goes, what I've seen tonight, you watch, Nuruddin will tell you, you watch this guy in a few years' time will be the best player in the world. They argued for one hour over Ronaldo. And then a week or so later, Ronaldo signed. And I was working at Old Trafford in the, um, in the uh, confections. Mm. And then when he came up, yeah, because I was in uni at the time, right? So when Ronaldo came on um, against Bolton, one okay, against Bolton, the, and that snuck out because everyone was in the, the 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 crowd, you know. So there was our 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 section was empty, you know, nobody was coming. I snuck out and I went to see him play. I couldn't believe that would sign Ronaldo, who had seen tore apart the team a week or so before. I was like, this guy is is going to. He be was great. seventeen, going on eighteen at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the sport, I remember it like it was yesterday, that sport in Lisbon game. I was like, well, who's this guy? Well, well, the thing what stood out about him is he had the same name as R9. Ronaldo. Yeah. Like, yeah. Is, he, is he trying to, is he copying him or whatever? <laughs> it's his son. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 get it. I remember Norridan just arguing with this guy, this Liverpool fan, and said, look, he goes, like, oh, yeah, but he, he's only a preseason. He's like, there's stuff in this guy that I've seen that's going to make him the best player in the world. And they had that. And absolutely, he, played, he plays without fear. That's what he was yeah. doing. Yeah. And sporting those Lisbon. Premier League defenders, they wanted to. I watched some clips of some tackles that guy went through. Like, what the hell? Some of yeah. those now are what you call that's an eight match ban instantly. Because they were like, there was one guy who tripped him down and stood, 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 stuffed on his stomach. Like, what the hell? What's... Those guys were. They wanted to end his career, bro. I'm not surprised he said, you know, I think I want to switch for the wing to the middle. Because those Premier League defenders were like, what? They were like, because he was the, there was one defender he took in. This guy, I think this guy must have been dizzy because he kept turning around, turning around, turning around, and actually fell down. Like, he was yeah. too quick. 
in his twisting and turns for a guy that tall, he was quite quick. I'd say that that 17, 18, but um the way we shaped him and he bulked up quick, bro. He they bulked yeah. him up quick, you know. But you know, the rest George is they just Best. Yeah, him, he? He said and, he, and the discipline that was the discipline between him and Georgie. Georgie was like, I'm that great. Anytime you put me on the field, I would destroy defenders, but I'm not gonna turn up for training tomorrow, next tomorrow. I'm gonna be in another country with Miss World and another. Yeah, <laughs> that's the difference. But hey, that is football today. But uh this um you guys still think would you still prefer the lit to come to United? That's a brilliant question. Um, over who? I mean, we've Lindelof on the brink of yeah. leaving. So if we, so we have Euro, we have Maguire, we have Martinez. So yeah. I think the lit will be. I think he's literally. If we sign him, he's literally going to be starting. I think he, he's also played with Ten Hag before, Favorite and he was actually Ten Hag's captain at Ajax. Yeah. Um, I am for signing the lift at the right price. And, and the reason why I'm saying that is because if you look at his profile, he's played for three big clubs. He's played for mm. Ajax, he's played for Juventus, and he's played for Bayern Munich. They're three giant European historians. Exactly. That, and, and you can bring that pedigree, even though he's not had the best time of re, of the past two years. Mm. He's still got that pedigree. He's winning trophies. He's a leader. I think he just needs, needs to reestablish himself. Um, I think on the Ten Hag, he played his best football. So I'm, I'm, I won't yeah, mind. That's what him. sold him to the world in terms of what he did at Ajax. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, 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 you I, take I, him I, on. Yeah, at, at, at the right price. Yeah, I would. But these guys are holding up for fifty. United want to. They don't want to go past forty-five. Um, I think we'll get a deal done with the Ineos. I think they they seem like shrewd negotiators. So I, yeah, I, 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 I think they they are some shrewd negotiators. Uh, Vim, yeah. your take, you want Delit? So, as for Delit, um, what, what's the price that they're... Um, 50. Oh, 50. Brian World 50. No more yeah. than that. I've, I've been reading about Delit. He's, uh, he's missed a lot of games through injury. So, I'm a little bit concerned about that. You know, the fact is that we buy damaged goods and we don't get to play him that often. Then what is he? What does he become? A bench warmer. As for the quality of the play, is good. There's no doubts about that. But you know, I'm reading that he's got problems with his knees. I mean, when you have knee problems, they stay for a long time. Because in football, and I have I have a knee problem too. You're constantly pounding that knee when you're running and play football. And these remember guys are Owen, playing with Owen Hargreaves. We bought yeah. from Bayern Munich. He had knee yeah. problems. And yeah. One season, it's over. That's it. So uh, you know, fifty million. We may get, I don't think we'll get a full season out of him and we end up, you know, with damaged goods. I'm, I think it's a bit of a risk. And, you know, buy, why are Bayern selling him? If he's such a great defender, you're going to keep that guy. You know, think about all That's, these uh, defenders boy, that stayed. Your boy, um, Who? who's, who's the new brand manager for ex-Man City um, captain? What's his name? Um, company. Co company. He he wants, I mean, company is a very great, was a great defender. Um he wants some. There's another defender he he wants in place of the lit. You, good question. Why is why are they selling the lit? Yeah. The lit wants to leave he's, for. More he's football. young, isn't he? Yeah, he's young, isn't he? 26, 24? 26, 24. 24 years old. It's very young. He is young. But he's he's. I think he's got a poor injury record, and I think that's why they want to shift him on. He's, right. a, he's a great defender. I mean, who are the two main centre backs of Bayern? Does anyone know? I don't know the centre backs. You would have thought it would have been him, yeah, unless his unless his performance has gone down. But you know, when we were looking at it initially, he was one of the best centre backs in the world. Uh, we, point, could, yes. we couldn't get him then. Mm -hmm. oh, so no. Alvarez. Has he? Yeah. So has he been injured for too long, and then his performance has dropped, and hence yeah. we're buying damaged goods? I think, I think potentially is a risk. You know, maybe invest in up and coming, younger talents who we can keep for the next ten years. Well, there was a poll with Bayern Munich fans. They've done a, um, a campaign recently to keep them, didn't they? They, mm. they all were like saying, look, we need to keep the lead. They wrote a letter to the board or something. And yeah, there was one. The fans to... don't want him to leave. The yeah, the fans. Maybe the club wants money. I don't know. 
I, I think they want to get um, this other defender, Tal, the German guy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Tal, 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 they want to get him, and I think they need to raise funds for him. So I think that's that's the reasoning behind it. But uh, yeah, his injury record is a bit suspect. So, I mean, yeah, I, I think it. I think we should be looking at other defenders because you know you, you, this this uh, these warning signs of buying and selling him, looking at other defenders to replace him. That's what we should be doing. But but Man United, what they're looking at is his ability to take the ball from the back. He's comfortable as a footballer. As in like he's that Martinez very ten hog exactly. He's the right side of Martinez's left side. So that's what they're seeing as then for a reason. Euro can do that as well. Hmm? Euro can do that as well. Yeah. But Euro's eighteen. They're looking like <clears throat> you know, can grow into that role. Euro, they're looking at he's going to be the next vintage. I oh, can't wait to see that. I'm pretty sure you, are you going to buy a car that's done 100,000 miles, uh, you know, been had some dodgy owners or whatever, and taken on the racetrack a few times and, you know, driven it hard through the streets of East London or Hackney? Are you going to buy well, that yeah, car? If you don't have you to buy something a little bit. There. Yeah, but, you know, <laughs> are you going to buy that Wembley? car? What about Wembley? Yeah, or well, even then, you know, there's some. Ruffian drivers everywhere. Are you going to buy that car that's been a little bit hammered? Or are you going to go for something a little bit younger and a bit more fresh that, that um, is also skillful? So, with car, if so, so, so using that analogy, a car which had a, which is durable, say like a German yeah, car, 100,000 miles though. So, you see, 100,000 miles on them solid cars don't, it's yeah. not that bad. Okay, it's not, it's not Mercedes, them, it's a Ford. Oh, okay. If, if, actually, <laughs> actually, no, Delit is not a Ford. Delit's going to be more like a, uh, I don't know, what would he be like? It's not a BMW. We'll put anyway, him in it's that slightly range. better. Toyota, we'll put, maybe. Toyota, for the Toyota have longevity. They're solid cars. <laughs> I mean, electrically, they're good, but durability, yeah. they're not as solid as the German car. Toyota. Toyota are very reliable. My yeah. dad had one for 14 years. It, not yeah, nice. so it was, so no it was a reliable car. Well, I, yeah. I, I wouldn't put them above a BMW. The BMW, no. in terms of luxury, like yeah, mm. uh, was probably more reliable. Yeah. So you drive a BMW, don't you, Richard? Yeah, how do you know? <laughs> Just by what you just said. <laughs> <laughs> he drives the ultimate driving machine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, they, they, they are, they are. I, I've owned three Mercedes and. I don't think I'll drive. I'll, I'll own a BMW because once you own a Mercedes, BMW is, is very a very competitive car. I've dated people who've had Mercedes, but at the same time, Mercedes just has that extra. Now, what these luxury cars are doing now is trying to get the electronic gadgets from what the other cars used to have over them. So they're putting all the dur- the electrical gadgets into the durability to make BMW, Porsches, and Mercedes more. Yeah, the prices have definitely gone higher, but make them the ultimate cars. Great in electronic gadgets, great in terms of durability. But everybody could afford their cars whereby they're overpriced, especially in America, whereby they're seen as foreign cars. So the parts are way expensive than when they're in Europe. That's the problem. Yeah. BMWs in America and Porsches, even just replacing a side mirror, you're looking over 500 for a side mm-hmm. mirror. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculously expensive now. I just had a front quarter panel have a little dent in it, size mm. of a 10 pence piece. Mm. And they'd send it away. They have to do some, because there's lots of electronics in there. Uh, Take off the, the quarter panel. I don't think even they beat it out. They put a new panel in. They had to do a lot of things with electronics. I don't know why. And it cost 4,000 pounds for a dent. This is what I'm saying. For a dent. And, bro. And That's small. If, it's even worse when you go through the insurance, because these guys- It was through the take- insurance, yeah. That uh, answers my question. Because what these mechanics do, when you take a car to a shop in yeah. America, they do that. Is this, are you paying out of pocket or paying by insurance? If you say yeah. insurance, they will build the insurance so high, they're charging for labor. I had my truck, because I had I have a, a Chevy Tahoe. I had the truck just to replace a light at the back. These guys had my car for two weeks and build the insurance company for two weeks of labor. I mean, I wasn't paying for it, but it, that's what they do, mate. Yeah, t- rip off. <laughs> rip so, off, is Bayern ripping us off when the Litz knees are shot? 50 million. 
Are they ripping us off? Are they selling you know, us they a banger? They, they want to stay for paying 40. But, but, Vim, if they say, if we get him for 35, max for uh, 40 with add ons, you're right. That's mm. million with add ons. How would you feel then? The 24 year old, if high profile, yeah, he's well, young, uh, experienced. He's young. The problem is, the problem is with knees. He's a winner. He's won league titles yeah. in Italy and in but, uh, Holland. But the problem oh, with his knees, you can't just have a minor operation to fix them. You know, if your knees are shot, your fin your career's finished. Because if you get knee replacement, you ain't gonna carry on playing football. You know, it's not like having uh, you know, a tendon injury that's gonna heal. If your knees are gone, they're gone. And your mm. footballing career's career will end soon. So I, I think we need to do some proper analysis on his knees, yeah. examinations, yeah. get there, you know, do some scans, mm. look at how much cartilage he's got in his knees, you know, is are they functioning correctly or is this guy damaged goods? Right. If 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 it's if we can get four or five years out of him, then buy him. Even at 35, 30, 30 million, whatever it is, buy him. But if it's a year and he's always on the bench, then forget it. We just wasted our money. I, I see. I think I agree with you. I mean, when it comes to knees, like I always remember, Owen Hargreaves was a very good midfielder. We only had one good season, which was the 08. We won the league uh, championship, league title, and Champions League that season. He was phenomenal. But the next season, he was done. We knew he had knee issues, mm. but we thought it's something we could manage. And he was out for so, three years, and we saw that it was done. Yeah. So, Tim, I, I want to ask you, because you, you've watched all the preseason games, haven't you? Mm, mm, and you're yeah. seeing it, you know, with, with, with a new management in place. You're seeing mm. the new players come through. Yeah. How do you think, it, does it look like we've, uh, we've moved on, progressed from last season? Do you think we're looking at a more promising season this year? Yes, I, I, I think we are looking more of a, a team that could keep the ball more and uh, ma make more b better decisions up front. Because what we used to do is just run into blind alleys. Rashford, not even like yesterday, what Rashford is doing is just like he did in the FA Cup final. When he gets the ball, he's not looking down. He makes a quick pass to the... Makes to, a pass. So he makes a pass. Excellent. So when the, he got the ball yesterday... He didn't even look. He just put the ball in the middle. Ooh. Rasmus was on it, just like he did for um, the FA Cup final goal. He just so he's it. been instructed to do that now. So why couldn't they do that last year? Uh, Such maybe, a simple thing, eh? Yeah, uh, well, and he realizes, like, listen, bro, I, I don't think even he confidently, I don't think he's able to take on players he used to because the pace is he broken. cannot. Yeah. So to save himself losing possession, he just like mm. releases the balls, makes a run, and sometimes. It, they 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 look better, and like I said, mm. Ahmed has really really shown maturity. Mm. I hope he stays fit, and he could. He, I think he should even start. He should be on the right wing. So How has this game changed? Because what Ahmed does, he has two options. He could cut in with his right foot, and he could cut in with his left foot. He's literally, I think, I think he's left footed. Is it? He's left footed, isn't he? Is Ahmed left footed? I think he is. He's left footed. He's left footed. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. he cuts in on the right, like Anthony, but he's not always looking to always cut score. He will beat a defender, cut the ball with his right, or sometimes uh, shoot with his left. He has two options because of his two feet, wow. two footed. Makes you wonder then, why did we buy Anthony if we had Ahmed all along? Because Ahmed was always injured. And I think Ten Hag did not really see a lot of Am Ahmed because Ahmed was always injured. So when he inherited that team, he saw Ahmed just. Somebody, because remember, Ahmed was loaned out to Sunderland where he made mm. like scored 15 goals. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, this team looks better. Mm -hmm. Like I said, the, yesterday they played a full team in the first half. They looked very organized. Arsenal couldn't break them down at all um, till we made that we were sloppy and it was offside. I mean, you could, it was so bad. But Maguire would need to, I'll, I'll, let, I'll give Maguire a pass because he's mm -hmm. just coming back from injury. He should not assume. It's not offside. Still do your job and clear the ball. Because that was yeah. happening yesterday. And um, yeah, I think uh, on, uh, the defence looks solid. But we still haven't got all the pass in. There's no dialogue there. There's no Luke Shaw there. We had one Masaka. He, he played well. But that led to the first goal because he got caught out. Which is okay. But uh, this team looks... They look like they want to all prove a point. 
I can see I think, they all want the ball. They all like listen. Everyone wants to. Everybody wants to show. Listen, you could trust me. I got this. I got this. Instead of shying away from the ball, and they all want to make an impact to impress. That's where they're at. Which is a do good you think, thing. Yeah, are they bonding better with Ten Hag as well? Because I always found that they were slightly. Yeah. Uh, they are. They didn't seem very friendly with each other. Ten Hag was on his yeah. own. They are. Casemiro okay. was taking the ball from the back. Finding yeah. Mount, Mount looking for the two wingers left or right, and that's what they did in the first half yesterday. You yeah, Casemiro to Mount, and they're working from there. There's this young okay. kid, he's like a butcher. I can't remember his name. Uh, God, is, it, no. is it Lissandra Martinez? No, 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 he, that, he has, not he that, has butcher. that Roy Keane <laughs> mentality. He took the ball, ah. and the man, he's okay, in midfield, he Let's has that Keane mentality. Collier, Collier. Yeah. Collier, yeah, he's he's brutal. I think he's blonde. He was he he is zero tolerance. I uh, he's missed the ball. Don't miss the man. Don't miss the ball. He takes the two of them out together. He doesn't give right. a damn. He's also someone I think should be elevated into the first team. We need somebody like him to partner Menu or partner Casimiro. Somebody who has the Toby. Legs. Yeah. Toby Collier. <laughs> somebody like that to who like hold it down. Whereby you're not getting past me, mate. So we need that young energy and that tenacity. Wow, so he's 20 years should, old. Yeah, he, yeah. He, should, he, he should be put into the first team. I'll put him there. He was solid yesterday. When we changed I'm, 11 players in the second half. Yeah. yeah. See, the thing is, right, it's, it's, this is what I do like about preseason, that you get to see some of the youngsters. Yeah. But then, you know, once you've given the chance to play in the first team, you've got to start rotating them in into the first year in the first campaign. Mm-hmm. And that's what he didn't, Ten Hag didn't do that last year. And I was kind of annoyed about that. Mm-hmm. Yes, Kobe Mino did get a chance. And yes. Ganacho had half, to yeah. have a chance because he was player of the season for the young for the youngsters. But you've got to, like Pep would do, you've got to slowly just bed them in. Game at a time, half a game at a time, 20 minutes here, 30 minutes there. Some of the easier games, some of the cup games. And Ten Hag just persisted with his favourites. And if he keeps making that mistake again and does it this year, then he's, I think he's going to fail his Pep. You 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 see these youngsters. You've seen them in live in action preseason. You've got to bring them in. You've got to see the likes of Toby Collier, the other guy you were talking about, Wheatley. Wheatley. I'm yeah. hoping we see more of these guys in the campaign. Any of the campaigns. You see, you cup see runs. why why mm. they why the cup runs yet, but in Premier League, I think they only allowed what twenty five players. But so if you have hard. injuries, can you not swap them out? I don't think. I think Neymar scored. I don't know if you're allowed to swap out. So you have a squad of certain players for that and Champions League, but the other cup games, you could always use these youngsters, which would be good for the growth and development, which United right. need. You know? what, what, do you know the, the deal with that, Richard? If you have, um, if you name a 25-man squad, then you get some serious injuries. Can you not swap, swap around that squad? Can you not bring new people in and say, well, this guy's out long-term? Surely you I can, think, right? I think you can, I'm not 100% sure to be honest, but mm. I think... You should be able to. It doesn't make sense because you're now a man down, you know? Yeah, it wouldn't seem fair if that, you know, supposing you had six, seven major injuries, exactly. then you've got nothing left. What, what else, you know, you're, you're playing with 16, 17 players. It's not enough. If we have a less injury score this season, we'll go far. A less, think... less injuries. I think we've actually changed the physio and the, the health team, I think. They made some changes there as well, because um, yeah, last season was an absolute mess. That was rubbish, absolute nonsense. Used off where we left off last season with two mm. injuries. Uh, in uh, in his press no, statement, I, yeah, go on, Rich. Yeah. Euro and um and um Thailand coming up after a few minutes into the game, mm. so we need to really sort that out. But I agree, if, if we've got a full strength team, then we should be able to get far. Mm. He was asked in his press statement. All the injuries last year, did that hinder you? Ten Hag, in his defensive way, said other teams had injuries. He said it's part of the game. So the 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 the, the reporter asked again, but they did of how was the impact of those injuries? He, as you know, Ten Hag will keep defending himself like every team has injuries. It's just that we used what we used to achieve what we could achieve. So not blaming anything like. So they were just, they were trying to ask him like, do you think is the training? Why are they getting injured? He said this part of the game. That was his response. Part of the game, mate. It did not. 
admit anything. But I just hope if we if those players stay injury free, I think United will do well. Um, the fixture lineup for this season, Liverpool, is, I think game three or game four, uh, with Liverpool with a new manager, I think they're still also going to need to do some transmission transitions. So I don't think Liverpool will be challenging as much. Um, news now that uh, De Bruyne is not going anymore. Mm. He's going to stay at Man City. Um, I don't know if Man City will still have that same momentum. They've had the one, what, four in a row now. Um, I think Arsenal are getting closer to them. I think if we stay injury-free, I think in, and with this news, I think United could get the act together and push for top four and start beating some of these top four teams. All those losing 6 nil, 7 nil, those days should be well over now, honestly. Also, Chelsea have a new manager, don't they? Enzo Maresca. Oh, yeah. So he, we don't know how he's going to do in his first season. Exactly. So, you know... Did they, they get battered by um, Chelsea. Chelsea. <laughs> Celtic, sorry. Yeah, 4 nil. They got destroyed, yes. By who? Celtic. Celtic. Oh, my word. Yeah. You know, pre- that's why I said these preseason games, they are not pre- they're not friendly anymore. They're very, you know, prove a point situation. You know, these guys, the teams are not taking them as, the fans are not taking them as that either. I know that stage of yesterday, you had more United fans than Arsenal fans in San Diego yesterday. That's strange, but that's United fan base. It is what it is. They, they are, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm hoping next season United go to Asia. I think they've done enough America back to back here. Let them go somewhere else. Come on now. It's getting too much. It's crazy. All the YouTubers all arrived in Los Angeles and California, you know, interviewing. Yeah. And it's really cool, really cool. I wish I could get to San Diego, but it just, it's a lot. It takes a lot. It's Previous a lot. year, they were at Houston, right? Yeah, oh, we were there. But Yeah, um, was it one or two games in Houston? They had one game in Houston, one game uh, in California. And they had the academy play one game while the first team was traveling. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, they did that. So yeah, well, the Houston game was good against Real Madrid. Yeah. That was a packed house, really and packed the, house. United yeah. fans and their Madrid fans and their master tried to edit the photo with white shirts. It was embarrassing. Yeah, it, it, it was really the, the the Madrid fans because um, Texas has a very big Spanish population. His a very big Spanish group. So Real Madrid fans were they came out in the numbers, absolutely huge numbers. But you know, yeah, it was yeah. it was a good it was good camaraderie. It was good, but yeah, even though we lost two zero, that was Onana's debut for us. I think it was, yeah. And um, oh, yeah, oh, you seen the one on the Ten Hag? Sorry, I, I'm yeah, when about... he got chipped from twenty yards, yeah, yeah. Like sorry, no, I'm not talking about that one. I'm talking about one ten years ago where we played Madrid, and the majority of the fans in the stadium were United fans. And oh Marcel... yes, that was in California in. Uh... This guy played in that game. Marsha, when he went, he did that fantastic dribble on the left. Yes. With Lingard. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Lingard, I remember that. Yeah. Tried yeah. to edit the photos. So it's, it's cr- cringe or No, United fans are crazy. They are. They will go anywhere to go watch United. You know, it is what yeah. it is. But a lot, of, a lot of people from Houston, only, only, I only know two people who went to go to California. It, it, it takes a lot, though. It really takes a lot. It's you know, It is far. The next game is uh, South Carolina. Mm. Which is another, if you're going to drive from Texas, that's five hours drive by road. You know, five hours. Yeah. So I think it's long, though. Yeah. I've driven, um, Georgia from, I've driven from, well, I remember driving from Dallas to Georgia, and that took, that took hours. That, that, yeah. That, that was, yeah. Because leaving the state of Texas is eight hours just to leave that state, is eight hours drive alone to come out of the yeah, state. Yeah. Is that massive? So that's how that's one uh, three quarters of your one third of your day done just coming out of the state before you get to the next state. <laughs> yeah. you, um, so went to Toronto recently. Some of my friends drove from New York to Toronto, which is not too far. Not too bad. Yeah. If we were gonna drive from Texas to Toronto, it's twenty five hours drive. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know how you guys do it. You know, it's a lot. Of... It is a lot of mileage there, bro. But yeah. this, the preseason has it, it, the real Betis game. I don't know what to expect with that. Uh, it's going to be 11 o'clock for you guys. So I don't know if you guys are going to be able to stay up to watch that game. It's 11 p.m. for you guys. 11 p.m. That's not too bad. Yeah, that's doable. 
That's 1 a.m. was a little bit too late. Yeah, it was. Then we've got Liverpool on Saturday, the last game. I don't know what uh, time that one is. Um, let's have a look. It'll be good to see. Oh, that. that's at 12 30 at night. 12, Sorry, my Manchester United Betis is 3 a.m. Oh, shit. Sorry, mate. So that's yeah. 9. If it's 3 a.m., that's 9 p.m. for us here. Yeah. Is it? Oh, well. No, hold on. And you guys have. Let me check. What's, what, what's the time difference? You guys are how many hours? London, London takes us six hours. All ah, right. So Liverpool Man U is uh, twelve thirty a.m. Twelve thirty a.m. Your time. Our time. So we will be six thirty p.m. Our time. Yeah, and Betis is three a.m. So that's a that's a no no. <laughs> yeah, but so yeah, so that that's kicking off at seven p.m. Uh, California time, right? Yeah, California two hours behind Texas. Yeah, they're eight hours behind. So yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, that's yeah. A, that's a big time difference, mate. I, I, even if I live in London, I'm not staying up at three a.m. to watch no preseason game. Mm-hmm. Nah, no. it, it, it's, it's a lot it. though. But you can watch the rerun on on METV. Mm, mm, mm. I think I think they just keep playing it. Actually, yeah, they keep so. playing it, and they want yeah. to subscribe. The the, the subscription is not yeah. bad though. Nine ninety nine for a whole year. I paid nine ninety nine yeah. for the whole year, which is really good, quite cheap. Which is about seven dollars. That is very cheap. It's very cheap. I tell you that. Yeah. It's really cheap. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so I, I subscribe for the whole year, but it runs <clears> out. <throat> the it runs out. The year ends. They cut it off. That you could watch it, uh, but you can't watch any games. They're so like. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah two week advance notice like your service is about to be ending. Are you sure you don't <laughs> want to update? And while you're there, yeah. we have new shirts. It's a real shame though that they can't show the live games, you know, no. considering it's even if it's at their stadium, they should have no. some kind of deal exactly. with the Premier League. But Can we show exactly. it on our channel? Yeah. It, they, that would be great, but because they, 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 they haven't got the rights that NBC and uh, Sky Sports mm. have. So they show the re- then they, they show the game after, right? Yeah, but they they, they just show they they show radio commentary of that yes, game. Yes, yes, yes. Just kind yes. of annoying, right? It's a main night game. It's at their stadium. <laughs> it's your channel. Put it on bloody TV. <laughs> they, well, if that's the case, then they'll tell you to pay more subscriptions. They, actually, they could ask for you to pay subscription for the game. Yeah, you could do that. But you should, you know, it just seems. I think Liverpool do the same thing. They just show radio commentary. You know, it just shows because the power of the Premier the League. Rights. The rights are, NBC pays yeah, but they, aren't they... a billion for the rights. One billion for the rights to show Premier League games at in America. So that, that means they've got exclusivity. No one else is allowed to show for it, you, not even the club's you, for, channel. For America. So in England, Sky Sports still have most of the, the licenses. For mm. that. One last question <laughs> they told me to ask you guys. Yeah. Are you guys, would you, what is your take on playing a Premiership game in USA? Rich. Sorry. <laughs> what? And, and and as much as uh, you know, I, I I like America and stuff. Just keep it in the house. Keep 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 it low. Uh, do you don't want to share? <laughs> it's not that. It's just it's it's like it's like asking, you know, um, the New York Yankees to play in Old Trafford. So 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 don't forget they play some NFL games in UK these days during the season. They play to come. They play at Wembley. So they're yeah. saying. They want some premise that the American fans should be given an opportunity to watch a live EPL game. I think it will happen in the future, maybe in the next five years, but I, I'm, I'm not for it. I think it should just be kept to it. The mayor of London said he, he they should do it. Did you hear what he said? The mayor of London? I, I didn't hear that. Um, yeah, he said, don't, he said... Don't listen to what know. the mayor of London says. He talks bollocks. <laughs> That's a yeah, he's your mayor. I, I, he's your mayor, uh, Vim. Yeah, he's not my mayor. He's bloody. <laughs> I don't know how he won that last term. That was what he said. Is it third term now or second term? Yeah, I don't know how he won that. Yeah, going anywhere. I, I, I didn't too, vote bro. for him. No. <laughs> yeah, and apparently, you know, he said put Ulays in as well, which uh, made him a bit of a villain. Yeah, right, yeah. Right. Do, do you know yeah, he had sure. death threats for, for heard, introducing Ulays and expanding the Ulays zone? Do you yeah, hear about so... that? I wow. heard it. I mean, I didn't think Ex- you, I didn't know it was that bad. Yeah, so he expanded it to the whole of the M25, and he's getting death threats mm-hmm. at his uh, home. Mm-hmm. So, um, and, and he's still yeah. gone. He said, um, "Yeah, he, the the Premiership should be able to be shown in America. It's a global yeah. sport." Um, I Your can't take. see how that's going to work because you know, Premiership is about twenty teams competing in in the UK. You know, everyone's home and away. How can you? 
then shift exactly. they want two you to teams focus your home game. and and their coaching staff and their you know boot people and player people and everything else you know a couple of planes to another to another country for what for 90 minutes of entertainment it ain't worth it it, it yeah. don't make sense to me it doesn't and and and, and you know it's going it's going to be a bit unfair on the smaller teams i, I doubt oh, they're going to do it for like the bottom half teams for example are they, are they going to say all right um who's come up this season which who, who are the promoting teams this season uh didn't norwich come back up no come on yeah, well, I mean, oh, free, let, let's take last season. I'm not going to say Burnley against Luton, are they? Mm. Yeah. I'm not going to say, oh, we've got a game in uh, LA for Burnley and Newton. <laughs> they're only going to take the top four or top six teams over to that. That can generate world. TV revenue. Yeah, yeah. Just, uh, I, I think it's some bad news, personally. So know. isn't that isn't this all about the Super League? Yeah, taking it abroad. Get all the best teams, put on these exhibition games somewhere else, call it a league, whatever you want to call it, and take it abroad. Isn't that the Super League all over again? It is. So they're saying, okay, a man out there do a game that should be playing at Anfield where everyone's watching. All right, this season, you just profit Anfield, we play the game in LA. That's what they want. That's what they're thinking. It to me, I think is not, it doesn't make sense. This is what America wants. Yes. Why doesn't America just have a, their own good league? They have an MLS. Why don't they just why are like, satisfied with MLS? Can't you are your teams because not that good over there? It's not the <laughs> same as EPL. No, it, it's not because EPL. EPL stands for English. You need an APL. <laughs> yeah, but if you look at if the Premier League owners, a lot of them are American, to be honest. Yeah. I can see why they're trying to push that. There you see. Oh. I, I think they need to invest in the MLS and start doing what Saudi does and get some good players over there as a retirement have... home. You know, a nice retirement home for all the players that we don't need anymore. And then you can have your own little fun league. MLS has no relegation, <laughs> no promotion. They don't have that. Really? So no. Super League. <laughs> so so what it is, is the owners say they can't yeah. afford to be relegated and have uh, and not have money. So right. if you come last, you're going nowhere. You come first, mm. you're still there. It is, it's just that. So there's nothing to inspire other teams to come up because yeah. they ain't going anywhere. Does the MLS, um, right, owning a team in the MLS, is it profitable as other sports in America? Do you know? Not as much. No, it's, still, it's still developing, still growing. Uh, soccer yeah. still not number one in America. It's still going to be behind basketball and baseball and American football. American football okay. is number one. American football is number one. So because I know I, I hear that it's highly profitable. It's probably the most profitable franchise, sporting franchise in the whole of America to set up an NFL team. Oh. Which is why, you know, which is what the Glazers Dollars, should mate. be investing their money in yes. and taking it away from Man U. But so your basketball is also very profitable, baseball, oh. but football is not so much. No. Football because not it, so much because <clears> it's not. So most American fans, 60% of American fans follow European teams. Mm. That's why now they make sure they come to America to satisfy yeah. the urge <clears throat> of seeing the American so, fan base and merchandise as well. Yeah, so that's that's probably where there's opportunity. America needs to, needs to pushing football, getting players over there, bringing up the uh, you know the viewership, the sponsorship, and 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 putting a lot of money into that area because what America's good at doing is publicizing sports and making it a global phenomenon you know everyone mm. takes interest in it mm. if they can do that with football i think you guys would be okay because you guys america is very good in business um and so if if you lot can start pushing football and uh make it profitable to own a club over there they you'll start seeing ex, in America, so. you'll start seeing ex-footballers with a lot of money like ronaldo investing and starting football teams in america so you, yes. you've nice got to make that mod- they've got to make that model work in america Yep. Yeah. They're pushing for Champions League to be played in America soon, which I still don't right. think makes sense because it's European Champions League. It's European, yeah. It's not a World Cup. See what yeah. I mean? It's what is the difference? What is the difference between them watching it live and it being played in America? It don't make no difference apart from a sure. bigger stadium, if that. I think America you know, will start, start with like the World Cup Cup final being played in America because I think that's okay because they do it in currently they do it in the Middle East Saudi 
Mm. In Japan a few years ago. Mm. She said, okay, let's see how the World Cup Cup final is in America. Yeah, that's why yeah. they're hosting 2026. <clears throat> they split it between Canada, yeah. Mexico, and United States. Three of them are yeah. going to yeah. co-host. But America has the bulk of the proper America, games. America has the infrastructure as well. You've got all the stadiums, yeah. you've got yeah. you've got all the transportation, you've got everything yeah. you possibly need to run major global sporting events. Mm. So things like World Cups and you know, yes, I can understand why they win so much of it. Whereas mm. you know, Qatar had to go and spend, I don't know, how many hundreds of billions just to get they, the infrastructure they, 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 they right. Did well. Considering it, it did was well, said it but, was too hot and all, they, they yeah, didn't work. But then, are they going to use that infrastructure again? No, most of them are collapsible. It's like like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, my yeah. God, like IKEA. Yeah, fold it back and fold it away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. Some of those yeah. stadiums they said they're going to ship them to <laughs> oh my word somewhere for numbers. Really? Some, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got stadiums. Whole, yeah, the whole stadium is packed in a box. <laughs> How the hell did you do that? <laughs> I think IKEA, IKEA engineers must be involved. Flat packet. <laughs> I'm telling you, bro, it is. But other, other than that, I think if you guys got any questions about anything else, um, United do, they still need two more signings to go with mm. Euro and Zerski. Um, mm. He hasn't back. played anything yet. He hasn't played because he played for uh, Holland in the world, in the Euros. But I hope he's not another Rasmus. <laughs> I never really saw him play. Did any of you guys see? I saw clips. Though. No, I didn't see him play. He, he's quick. he was always. He, a, a he was always. I've seen the best of, but the best of is always quite good. But I didn't see him play in the Euros. Did you? No, I didn't see him play in the Euros. He's Dutch. Isn't he? Isn't he Dutch? Yeah, yeah that, that's a red flag. That, you know, he didn't even get a game. So <laughs> Christian, he says he's watched him for Bologna and he's very good. He's very technical. He's more. He's not a striker. He's more of like a second forward. Oh. So you put him like a. Uh, who can we compare him to? Um, you know, plays slightly behind the striker, the drawn role, false nine maybe. Okay. That type, of, that type of stuff there. Maybe like a habit, but hopefully better. Okay. Than okay. So better. Oh no. Yeah, have your your boy have a missed a penalty yesterday. Did he? Yeah. Yeah. Anana saved it. <clears throat> Anana's good. This chick now he does. Yeah. He points to the right. You actually say point to the right. And yeah, he's pointing like to yeah, this is my right. right. You're saying both. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he'll do that and start moving around, trying to right. get to your mind. And Martinelli yeah. saw <clears throat> Martinelli like left. All right, you want me to put it to the right? I'm gonna put it to the left. And yeah. none of you need to watch it. Let me not spoil it for you. It was embarrassing. Yeah. Yeah, what is the deal with this anyway? So the match ended 2 1, but you still do penalties. Entertainment for the fans. <laughs> That's why you guys should not be hosting stuff in America. <laughs> hey, not me. Don't, don't. Hey, 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 hey. I live here. I ain't from here. Don't get it twisted, mate. I'm from E8. What's E8? You figure oh, that hack one out. Me, mate. Yeah, hack me where you wouldn't drive your Ford Escort. There you go. <laughs> So, yeah, so before the game end started, they already said results, regardless of result, they're going to do a penalty shootout just to entertain the fans. Yeah. So, but then that's it was, just it's just for a laugh, then, isn't it? It's, it is it's not real laugh. pressure. No. It's not real pressure like penalties in the, in the yeah, European that's why I competition. Said United lost the game, but won the yeah. penalty shootout. So, a guy called me today, like, it's pointless. what does that mean? I said, It doesn't mean anything. Yeah. What does it mean? <laughs> Nothing at all, bro. Is that me? Who, just... who, who took the pens, by the way, for you uh, know? McTominay, Sancho, Evans, and um, who the last guy? Evans, McTominay, Sancho, and uh, yeah, three. Of... I and think we, we it was really four missed... three. Yeah, we didn't oh. miss his penalty. So Evans okay. scored, McTominay scored, <clears throat> Sancho scored. Who was the fourth score of the guy? It was all right. the experienced guys who scored. Okay. And so it's just five pens each. That's it. Or, or unless it's five each and then you keep on going. Mm -hmm. That's it. And they do yeah. that for every friendly. I, I don't know if they're doing that for every friendly, but the man I didn't ask them, they did the same thing last season. We beat them 2 0 yeah. and still played penalty shooter. They said that the first <clears> time you beat a, a, a team twice in the same game. Yeah. And it is a normal time. But it, it, yeah. it's silly, but. I guess, you know, yeah, I suppose the yeah, entertainment value. Did they have cheerleaders at the game? <laughs> no, no, I didn't know cheerleaders, bro. 
Yeah, that would be good. Mate. Well, it's you're an American thing, you know? You have cheerleaders. Uh, they they yeah. do, I, I think. But those are always for the um, football games and basketball football games. games. But they're not introduced. Yeah. The, the, the Copa America halftime entertainment, they had Shakira do a second uh, half halftime. Yes. It, it, it's, to me, I don't like circus. Just get on with it. And the 15 minute entertainment at halftime ended up being 25 minutes. And Colombians were like, listen, this is stupid. The players are mentally ready for 15 minutes. It now they have to wait 25 minutes for Shakira to finish her dancing and her performances. That's where we are. So in the World Cup, we might see all of that. Um mm. halftime entertainment, probably, you know, play, people coming to dance for you. For, <clears throat> Whatever. It's it, stupid. It, it, it tried to keep the uh, the crowd warm and entertained and yeah. getting good value for money because it's, but we don't t- need I'm sure tickets. We, want the, we came to see. Yeah, but football. I think you spend tickets are expensive, right? So you mm. you feel like you want to give them value for money because ninety minutes of football plus all the other bits they make you feel like you're getting value for money. You know, you get one big celebrity doing her pop songs. You might get some cheerleaders and whatever else and fan zones and i think it gives you i mean you richard you worked at manu right what would they do to add in this these extra bits of hospitality to make the fans feel like it's money well spent uh, yeah getting all those cheerleaders and uh, celebrities might work i i, I it, won't, it won't work in english football to be honest oh. it's not it, it, because it, it, we don't need, we don't just don't need that. It's just like listen, we're gonna watch a game. But we're going to watch. Gonna yeah, yeah, yeah. The fact it's not, it's never gonna work. Um, yeah, just stick to football, you know. Yeah, no, no, no. Did yeah. you guys remember Champions League this year? The opening ceremony they had this grand, or they, they now followed that model of Super Bowl entertainment, yeah. which is yeah. Yeah, I don't know, man. It it's, doesn't work. I don't think it works. No. Nah. And I hope the Champions League stays in Europe. It's called European Champions League, not True. World Champions League. And Super exactly. Bowl is not a world. They keep calling them World Champions. We argue this a lot. It's only two American teams playing it. So where did the World Champions? It's crazy. Quick question: You watching the Olympics? You watching the Olympics? I um, you know that's a great question. I've not been watching them. I'm I'm a bit annoyed at their opening ceremony. That is uh, maybe a discussion for another day. But um, the the opening ceremony really disturbed me. You know why? Right. What, what was it about the opening the, ceremony? Because it was the first time they were paraded on boats through the channel. No, not even, not even that. It's just the, the, they were mocking uh, elements of Christianity. Really? Uh, really? Yeah, they, they mocked. They, yeah, if you, yeah. They they mocked the, the Last Supper by putting. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, some transgenders and stuff. Um, well, as in, as in the twelve at the table, disciples, they had yeah. transgenders at the table. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. I, 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 you know, look, I didn't, no, no, I didn't see that in the opening ceremony. Really, they were, I didn't see they were, that bit. They were doing some other stuff. They put a little girl near the transgender. And really, one of, that, one of the guys had the, the balls out. It was hey? very bad. It was very, huh? it was very wow. Bad. Yeah, yeah. Look, if, if, if there they was some um... Paris would have been burnt down, but I think I think yeah, you can't mock Christians like that. Even if you don't believe in that stuff, if you don't mm. believe in Christianity. Mm, mm, at least mm. respect it. Show some yeah, dignity. Yeah, I, I, I didn't agree with. That. I didn't see that. Did you say, maybe, did you say maybe Paris should have been coverage, burnt down. The, the, maybe the coverage because American coverage yeah. is completely different. Sometimes yeah. when the teams were parading. They split the screen in two and are interviewing an athlete like, bro, forget the athlete. I want to see the people, the country being paraded. Well, the, parade, the parade was absolutely uh, awful. Um, I, again, what, what I said, Vim, is I said if it was another religion that had been mocked. Oh, uh, yeah. Yes, yeah, so I know what you mean. Yeah. Paris wouldn't, wouldn't have survived. Yeah. I hear you. I know what you're saying. Yeah, if it was I another religion, I'd get you. I agree. I'm quite surprised they actually did that because I thought Macron is, uh, isn't he Christian? If, if he he signed off a massive amount of money for this uh, opening ceremony. It was, mm. it was um, uh, again, I don't want to get too political on, on here because it's a football channel, but it was a gay mm. Jewish uh, designer that um, designed the opening ceremonies. Issa Laurent. 
No, no, no. I, 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 <laughs> what did you say? It was who designed it? It was a gay, gay Jewish. Oh, it was a gay dude. Oh, it was yeah. a gay Jewish guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, I was surprised well, that he did that. I saw a lot awesome. of Yisa Laron in the opening ceremony. They had these big trunks made with the, you know, the branding of Yisa Laron. You know, that's the oh, handmade yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah so talk. what's in the trunks? What's in there? They're transporting the trunks. The coverage you guys are getting is kind of different from, because American, American coverage, they're just showing the American, they just do whatever. They, and you're just like, whatever, mate. So, yeah. But um, I am looking, I'm looking forward to the track and field, the swimming, and probably football. That's what I'm looking for. That's got break dancing to... as well. I'm going to be watching the break dancing. They started <laughs> That's going to be good. Golf in Olympics, which I think yeah? is ridiculous. There's, uh, there, there's a few new sports they've put in there. They've done, I think they've put base jumping in or something like that. That's just ridiculous, mate. Because it's massive in Paris, isn't it? They love base jumping over there. Oh, sorry, not sorry, not base jumping. Park, what's it? Parkour. Parkour. I have no clue. You know what that I is? No, no, I don't. You know what, what parkour is, is? You know when they jump from fence to fence and up and down buildings? Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, I don't know how yeah. they would do that in the Olympics, though. I don't. I don't think it's impossible. That's break dancing the is there. So they have a they have surfing that's going to be done in Tahiti, yeah. which is another oh. island. Away from France, away from Paris. That's where the 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 surfing tournaments will be done. And I'm like, what the hell? But well, it is what it is, man. I I the most the, the two winners, the two teams always fighting for most medals in mostly China and USA because they have seven six hundred athletes they take to take part in every single category. You know what mm. I mean? The the only reason America always tends to win by a few more medals is because China don't have athletes in terms of track and field. That's where United uh, United States tend to get ahead but other sports yeah. shooting fencing bow and arrows whatever you want to call them yeah they, they spent 10 there. they spent 10 billion on the opening ceremony 10 ouch. billion ouch that's oh crazy on just the opening ceremony yeah on the whole olympics yeah and, and, and opening and, ceremony ouch I, no i i don't i didn't I oh sorry I didn't. sorry my bad my bad sorry my bad 10 billion for the games okay yeah um, that makes sense yeah so, but yeah, there was a lot of money spent on the opening ceremony. They were, the they kind of, to me, I think it was over the top to me. I thought it was a bit over About the top. About 150 to 200 million reported euros. See, seeing people on the boats, that was good. But all the other stuff, the other subliminal messages, <laughs> I, 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 can't, I can't subscribe to that. So. No. Some of it, they were no. trying to make it into a movie, and it was a bit much. That was, but, but think about yeah. it. They wanted to show a lot of French culture. You know, what did so, they, yeah, and which they should, but what did they say on the commentary on, on those bits, though, you know, that were offensive? Did Because they always have commentators saying what's happening, explaining it. I would not say, because yeah, American, say... American coverage is completely different. Uh, there was some Americans that said it was quite good, uh, um, but they didn't show clips of them. I, I didn't know. I switched, up, I switched it off. You switched it off? Okay. Yeah. After did, that, did that. yeah. Have any of you played Assassin's Creed? Yeah, yeah. No. I yeah. Haven't. So that's made by Ubisoft. Ubisoft being French. Did you see the Assassin's Creed uh, uh, character and going through the rooftops and stuff like that? Yeah, Did yeah, you yeah. see all of that? All oh, right. Was that the guy yeah. running and all that? Yeah. So that was looked just like Assassin's Creed and right. the towers and the steeples and going yes. at the top of the tower. Yeah. That was all Assassin's uh, Creed. Really? Yeah. Okay. Uh, that was. I enjoyed that bit. So they had Ubisoft, Snoop. Yeah. They had Snoop Dogg and Dog carry the torch mm. and hand over and stuff and. It was fine. It was what it is. Yeah. But uh, well, we'll see how it goes. Well, any more questions on Man United and football? Did you guys yeah. see the Morocco Argentina game? Bloody hell, man! Oh. That was something else. Any good? Any fights break out? <laughs> so, um, the game was one-one. A goal was disallowed. An hour yeah. later, VAR played it back and awarded the goal. An hour later. Oh my! An hour later. So what did they do? Go for siesta or something? <laughs> Joke, isn't it? VAR is on another level, mate. Yeah, yeah. So it's like maybe they, had, maybe they, they lost score, power or something. No, think about no, it. They had electric, uh, lost the electric for an hour. It's like Man United and Liverpool playing. <laughs> a goal was disallowed in the 10th minute. Then the 18th yeah. minute, uh, come together, the goal is going to be re reinstated. Like, what the? That's what happened. That's a joke, huh? Argentina were furious, but I'm happy yeah. happy to Argentina. They're going away with so much. So, mm. F, they F off, I could look careless. Did Amrabat oh, yes. play? No, he's it's mostly under 23s. 
I think. Oh, it's under 23. It's mostly under 23, yes. Oh. They have the allowed one, one over age player and the rest all should be all under 23. Yeah. The Spanish women, <clears throat> they are killing it. They are literally yeah. killing it. Yeah. They're probably going to win the gold. I have a question. Mm. For both of you, actually, especially mm. you, Richard, because, uh, you know, you're often, like, you have, uh, how can I say? Don't be shy. I'm, I'm positive about clubs generally, about the outlook. What's your feeling now with the change mm. in management, with Ineos coming in? And yes, I know you weren't that happy about Ineos, but, you know, we've got three people at the top who are, like, running the show and they seem to know what they're doing. Signing, making some good signings. What's your feeling now? about the club both of you. we've stabilized a bit but we've got some good people in uh football wise like omar barada i think it's mm-hmm. a good astute acquisition the structure's slowly but surely getting into place i'm still not 100 percent sold by in i don't like all the mass redundancies that's been reported you know he's a multi-billionaire and you know he's asking people to pay tax uh, that uh, their own taxes towards the stadium. There's some things I'm not comfortable with, but overall, I think that we should start to play better football mm. and just compete at the top level. What I'm expecting us to do it as soon as possible, in reality, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think we're going to mm. be challenging for the league. In reality, mm. the league, mm. I think mm. that it's a bit disappointing. What what's because you've obviously worked at the club, right? He's he's getting rid of two hundred and fifty people. But when I, I was reading reports that he said he was going around Carrington and various other places and it was a mess. And lots of people were just working from home, taking the mic, not coming to the office, and he felt like there was no productivity. You've worked there, so you probably have a better view than anyone else. Uh, what, yeah, I mean what, I why do they have there. so many staff? What do they do? I, I don't know. I mean, this was 2000, 2002. You know, I, right. I only worked during the summer. And I, I was working for an agency. You know, this was just during my time at uni. I think it was in the first or second year of uni. So I, I, I honestly don't know. But I, I think that maybe we do have too much staff. I, I, I don't know. I don't know what, what goes on nowadays. Mm. Um, but at the same time, you know, the, we, we've been operating that way for the past God knows yeah. how long, you know, especially on the Ferguson one was successful. I just think that this is quite drastic. You know, people have been there for many years and I do get cost, cost cutting exercise, but I think we should, if you're going to cut, cut costs, do it to, you know, players. That players. Are really yeah. You know, so I think, I, think yeah, I mean, like cost cutting Rashford probably would have saved those 250 <laughs> jobs, right? <laughs> 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 no, I, I, I think overall, I think with this new structure, I'm expecting better quality of leadership. I'm expecting better quality of man management of man the players. I'm happy they're yeah. taking responsibilities of Ten Hag's hands and let yeah. him focus on the football and the, the quality of football and the tactics. I'm sure I'm happy he's got a proper structure now, diet of football and all the other malarkeys around. I'm happy he has that. So now they focus on the to give give get him the right players that fit United's DNA profile and they've all agreed the football they expect. I'm not expecting them to challenge for the title this season. Mm-hmm. I'm expecting to see a blueprint of where United should be heading. So I'm expecting a top four challenge, a top four minimum a trophy. And I want to see <laughs> players hungry for success. So yeah. having players who fit the profile of winning, want to win fighting for the badge at all costs. That's the kind of what I'm looking in this direction. Not this one whereby, you know, oh, we're losing, we're 2-0 down, has the whole, the, the head drop, it just becomes can- uh, uh, contagious. Everyone just like, let's, well, we, this one, we'll, we're, we're done with this game, we go for the next game. No, you fight yeah. to the very last. We, I don't mind losing. It's how you lose. You know, when you lose, I'm, whereby we're... you don't even just, this can't be asked. Just We're going to lose. We are going to lose games. Huh? Yeah, we are going to lose games throughout the we season. But the thing is, we've always got for the next three, four years. We've got to be on an upward trajectory now. Oh, we've we've got to doubt. be improving year on we've year. We can't. Have, we can't have what happened last season where mm-hmm. we had a good season, well, first good season eighth, with Ten Hag. Eighth, right? Yeah, have a first good season with Ten Hag, and then we just implode. Second, that cannot happen again. Mm-mm. That just cannot. 
you know, no. we've got all the right people. So <laughs> structures they, they in place. Should be held accountable. Yeah. Them lot should be held accountable. If you know, yeah. because it kills <clears throat> us down. Yeah, no Woodward, no other people who are just you know no, the, uh, trying to trying Murto. to trying to do the job. Yeah, Murto. Murto was good in a, in another job. I hear, he just wasn't good as the uh, football director. But I think Jason Wilcox and uh, Dan Ashworth, they they're quite good, and they can spot talent. But I'm also hoping that we upgrade our infrastructure. We start building data analytics teams that we can start analyzing plays and build reports on them, and they start looking at their injury records as well, so that we would filter out players like Delic. You know, start being wise about acquisitions like Man City have been. Yeah, yeah, they don't, they really leadership. make mistakes. Yeah. Under Barada's leadership, he's got to bring all of that success that he brought along with others to Man City and bring it here. So, yeah, that, that was a great coup to get him. So yeah. I think I think it has to be upward trajectory for the next four years. Minimum. Well, there you go. So, I mean, yeah. with, with, uh, on that note, I think we've come to the end of the show today. I want to be, give a big shout out to the UK crew. I mean, the US crew completely abandoned me today, but it is what it is. Well, I want a big, big shout out to Rich and Vim. Thank you very much for joining us today. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe to our channel. We are really on the high projection. We are really close to 4K now. We're literally less than 200 away. So just keep sharing and subscribing and we shall get there. But big shout out to my UK crew. Have a nice week and uh, we shall uh, reconvene on Wednesday or if there's any breaking news for United this week, we'll let us everyone know. All right, guys, have a nice evening and a great week. Take care. Take care, guys. Take care.